the year. And let's go to our friend Gary Cobb. Gary, I'll tell you what, man, the junior varsity giants. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah, that was that was really frustrating, you know, to see them uh play like that. But you know how uh football is. If you're not really getting ready emotionally during the week and you're being sincere about putting everything into it, it's hard that you can't turn it on, you know, the last minute before the game and just go out there and you're, you're playing good football if you weren't doing that all week. And so this is really a lesson for them. And, uh, you know, Jalen, he's not all the way there. You know, you can see that they were going to try to protect him. And see, it's, it's really kind of hard to play and protect them and do all that at the same time because they're they're not the same t uh, team unless he is that run threat, you know, where there's a run threat. he's a, You know how it gets man-to-man -man, a lot of times. Uh, he just kills man-to-man -man because he'll scramble. And most of the defensive linemen, they're not fast enough to catch him. And so he's able to really hurt teams that way. And, and then also with, uh, you know, him just having the threat where he can pull that ball out of there anytime when he puts it in there and take around, uh, take off uh, around the corner. If you don't have contain, if somebody's cheating and trying to help, uh, even like on bootlegs, there are times where he's supposed to be handing the ball off. He can pull it out of there and, and run a bootleg. And uh, it really hurts teams. So, he has to get all the way back. They need him all the way back. Uh, it's good they have the week off, uh, but that was not good football yesterday. I mean, it was just – it was sloppy. It uh, was just not – that wasn't like, you know, the championship level of play that you want to see. Uh, that was not there yesterday. I'll tell you something too, Gary. I, I, I thought we all thought they would win, but my, my comment on Friday was let's see how they manage the roster and Hurts. Yeah. Uh -huh. And there they were in the fourth quarter, Gary, with yep. Hertz playing all the way through 59 minutes of football. They couldn't close yep. them up. And yep. I'm thinking to myself, you couldn't – the Giants had surrendered the game. Yeah. And know. they showed up and made a game of it. I mean, are you troubled going into this now with the bye now that – you know, do you feel comfortable that this team is playing the best football or do you think you're concerned now because of the injuries – and maybe some of the coaching. Well, you know, uh, I haven't really been happy with, with everything they've done coaching-wise. And, and I, I got to give them some slack from standpoint. I do like some of the things they've done with Jalen. I mean, they have really expanded, you know, their attack. They've utilized his skills and everything. But I said all along, too, though, that, you know, if you have him run a lot and you, you don't tell him to get on the ground and do it, he's probably going to get hurt at some point because this is the NFL. Come on, you got a 330-pound guy lands on you. You know, there's a good chance something is going to give. And so that's what it, it happened. It caught up to them. But I thought that they were getting away from, look, telling that offensive line, look, we're not going to rely on this with Jalen, though. You guys got to move, guys. We're going to come back good old-fashioned where he's, he's handing the ball off. You guys got to move, guys. We brought you in here. We think we got the best offensive line in the league. We, you got to move guys out of the way. You don't, we, don't wanna, we don't need to trick anybody. We could tell them, hey, we're running here, and we're going to run here anyway. So I, I don't want to see them get away from that. And I think in certain ways where you get reliant on, on Jalen, the way you start getting away from old-fashioned, hard-nosed, bust you in the mouth and run the ball on you. And, and they can't ever get away from that because now we see who's up the road, Okay. You, you know, it's probably going to be Dallas and it's probably going to be San Francisco. Okay. Now, San Francisco, they don't make any bones about what they're about. <laughs> they're going <laughs> to run gonna, you over. Hey, they're going to punch you in your mouth and then they're going to try to run you over. And, 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 they're, and they're going to do that. And they've got all these different guys. A lot of them are, are they run, man. They're going to run the ball. So they're going to do different ways. But you look up, it's going to be the same attack. And then they're going to do play action off of that, to where you think and run, and then they're going to throw the ball. So the Eagles, ultimately, it's going to come down smash mouth football. So you can't get too far away from that. That's why I like some of the things the Eagles have done, but I don't want them to get away from smash mouth football to where you're just running the ball with, with uh, you know different run plays, where you don't have Jalen there 
to really give you an advantage because of his run threat. But uh, we'll see two weeks. No, no, Gary. How, how about this one, Gary? Yeah. Did you have a problem with the scrub third team running back and the scrub third team offensive line and mm. the scrub quarterback yeah. running the ball for 135 yards against the first team Eagle guys? Yeah. And I ask you, now that we've seen this for a month and a half now with Joseph and Sue, do yeah. you think that this team is still um, has issues when it comes to stopping the run? And that could be an issue, especially against a team like San Francisco. Well, I, I think it is an issue. You know, it's still uh, because a lot of the whole thing with the run. Now, uh, you see the guys on, on the defensive line. Now, with Sue um, and uh, 72, I forget his name, but anyway. Joseph. Yeah, Joseph. Uh, they know they've been brought in here to help stop the run. Okay, so when they get in there, they're try they're 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 handling their business from that standpoint. But a lot of the guys, you know, it's been sack, 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 sack. So the guys are, are doing the sack, like on that uh, that touchdown that the quarterback ran. The the tackles were lined out outside over the the, the other team's offensive tackles. The, there was a gaping hole in the middle because they want to get upfield to try to get another sack rather than playing sound football. Come on, man. You, you can't do that, you know, and they have got to get solid because they got to realize that some of these teams like San Francisco, they don't have to worry about getting uh, getting a, a pass rush. They better stop the run or there will be no pass rush. So they, they've got to just get more fundamentally sound where, look, we got to stop the run. We want to win. And, and really, everything starts over now. It's a whole new season because everything is one and done now. You know, nobody cares what your record was. If you can't win, you're going home. So uh, they have got to get uh, fundamentally sound. They got to tighten up their defense. Uh, of course, with the um, with the job they do against the pass, they can't just sit in those soft zones. You know, you got to get off the field, and and it's going to be a fight. But uh, you Gary, know the way things Ve are. Vague couple last questions for you. No Vegas problem. and Atlantic City have the Niners as the favorites now to win the NFC. Wow. Okay, so just to put that there, I mean, me you know, I'm not shocked. Here. You know, I'm not shocked. I'm not. I'm not shocked either. Let me let yeah. me put this. Who do you think was in better shape heading into the postseason, the 2017 team or the 2022 team? Mm. What team do you think was better situated going into the postseason? You think this team has a better opportunity than what those guys did in 17, or were they more? More experience. Give, give me your give me your take on. Well, that. you know, uh, you know, I, I guess the, the guys in in, in uh, seventeen, uh, they went in, and uh, I don't think pe the people really believed in them. You know, um, they had a lot of veteran players, though. You know, a lot of guys that have been through a lot of stuff. Um, Chris Long the, and them. Dudes. Chris Long and those guys. I mean, you know, who who uh, been around the league a long time. They had a lot of experience going in. So they were a very smart team, um, but I don't think people were in awe of them because they they hadn't they didn't finish strong either because you know ultimately you had that injury, um, and then you got uh, uh, Foles has taken over. He didn't play well initially, and so they really kind of surprised people because I don't think you know everybody no not everybody was a believer. So as for comparing the two. I, I guess there's a lot of similarities because I don't think everybody believes now. After that performance yesterday, nobody's looking at the at the Eagles. A lot of really the last month, Kerry. When you yeah, think really, it's, it's really been the last, last month, not just four quarters of football. You're right. You're right. But it's, been, it's been more of a month, and I want to I want to add on to that. Mm -hmm. You know, I watched coaching on Saturday night with Doug Peterson, and uh -huh. I got to tell you, man, he wins a division title, turns Trevor Lawrence around. Yeah, they clinch a division in his first season. Mm -hmm. To me, I'm going to make a statement, and you tell me if I'm nuts or I'm off base here. Yeah. If the if the Eagles do not win the Super Bowl, it was because they had the wrong jockeys running that football team. Because the jockey, at the end of the day, won the divorce. His first opportunity, he's coaching a team to a division title. The Jags. We're not talking about the Giants, or yeah. you're not talking about the Bears, 
Yeah. Or some franchise like San Francisco. We're talking about a team that's only won four division titles yeah. in its history, and now Doug's won one. I mean, am I am I off base when I say that? Well, you know, I, I mean, team team had better coaching. I mean, I could understand you making that argument. I think I think there's a legitimacy to it. Um, I, I wouldn't want to, you know. Um, I think you know you've got to realize Nick is in his first year. Now they do have a very talented team, um, but. You know, everything's going to come down to a play here, a play there. And um, so I, I don't know that I'd do that. As long as, you know, the game they play against, let's say San Francisco is a close game, you know that, you know, you could be a good team and you're going to play them in a close game and you got to make a play here, a play there. I think that's probably what's going to end up happening as to who goes to the Super Bowl. It, it, it's probably going to be the Eagles and the Niners battling. And we know it's probably going to be a close game, you know. Oh, yeah. And – and it'll go down to the wire. So, um, you know, I could see where, you know, uh, they could end up losing a close game. And, and still you look at it and you say that uh, Nick has done a tremendous job. Uh, but, you know, if they go to and continue playing the way they have been playing, then, you know, you say that, you know, they uh, they fell apart at the end. And, and then you would give, um, give Doug uh, the thumbs up to say that he had his team ready because he ultimately took them all the way. And, and, and you know they got the uh, they got the title, so it, it's going to be tight. Question, last yeah. question for you here. Um, you know, going going into the postseason here, the loss of Lane Johnson has been what to this team? It just seems that I don't want to say they've unraveled. Even more so with Jalen being out, obviously that's a major factor. But yeah. Lane's loss, the impact of him not being there, has been what to you? Well, I, I think I think it's been uh, substantial uh, because, you know, a lot of times they look at that right side and they say, well, we don't even have to, you know, they're not game planning for that side. They don't have to worry about when, they, when, they're, when they're pass blocking. They don't worry about whoever's over there. They don't really care. We give them the lane, he'll take care of whoever's over there. Now they can't do that now. Now they got a game plan about that right side. And, and uh, there have been times it's been shaky. And uh, yesterday, you know, uh, you, you got to give uh, credit for the fact that the, the blitzes really were unnerving and they took the Eagles out of what they like to do, you know, those blitzes. So somewhere or another, they're going to see some of the things they saw yesterday because, uh, you know, the NFL is a copycat league. So there are going to be people coming after them. Uh, and hopefully, you know, Lane can come back. I don't know that he can play, how well he can play with that abductor uh, injury. Uh, but hopefully he can come back and, and, and stabilize that right side because – uh, you know, they want to be able to, you know, throw the ball and throw the ball comfortably uh, with the, you know, without having, you know, uh, Jalen running for his life. So this thing's going to be interesting, man. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I know. No, I, I, hey, I'm with you here. By the way, I, I, I see you're at a shop and I just would like to tell you this, that I really miss the Morris Blackman, you know, cut back in the day, you know, I mean, <laughs> right, I, yeah. I, I, I miss the old, I miss the old flat top, you know, yeah, you know, right. you know Gary, I mean, <laughs> you rocked that thing for years, dude. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm trying to remember the name of that guy who, uh, yeah, from they, cameo. Yeah. Cameo, the cameo guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well that, Hey, that's up. Uh, that's in the past. So, uh, yeah, no, you rock. Hey, no, you rock that flat top dog. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> Hey, I That's love it. you, Gary, man. Thank you right. so much for doing this. Hey, have a good man. one. Appreciate I hope the boys have something. From Fox I hope they have something. What's that? I said, I, I, I hope they have some a strong finish. Me too. Me too. They're, they're going to need it. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Gary. That's Gary right. Cobb from Fox 29. Whew. Absolutely, man. Okay, let's get to – I see some of you guys' thoughts. Wait a minute. So there's a guy going 14 wins versus nine. What are you talking about with what Nick did? Yeah, okay. You're right. Nick's a better coach than Doug Peterson. If that is not any more evident this year that he's not. When your coaches, when your coaches can't figure it out, they run to their boy, Coach Roseman. I can't figure out how to stop the difference in the run game. I can't, I don't know. Can you get me something? So they go to Baskin Robbins and find two dudes standing at the ice cream store. Hey, can you play the run? <laughs> we'll add you to the team. Doug Peterson figures the jag puzzle out. <laughs> Hold on. Doug Peterson figures the ultimate Rubik's cube out. 
known as the Jacksonville organization. He figures the Rubik's Cube out. <laughs> Here's Nick and Shane and Jonathan Gannon. Uh, uh, left, left. It's left, left three. Top spin two. Roll it over. Bottom three. Two. And all four sides. Even an idiot like me knows that. <laughs> Even an idiot like me, Doug can't. <laughs> I mean, if I'm Doug Peterson, man, I must be sitting here going, the one and the oh man. And I, I'm not going to say it because I made a prediction, man. I can't. I'm not going back on my prediction. <sighs> wow. Boys, you fired a coach of the year. Justify that. Justify it. And you're going to go, well, they're 14 and three. So you think the job that Nick did this year is better than the job that Doug did in Jacksonville? Really? You have the best of everything. And really. <laughs> Dude, Doug, Nick Sirianni's the third best coach 